Good day, everyone. Good day, Cisco. Thank you for allowing me to be here as a speaker today at DevNet Create 2021. Wow, isn't it a wonderful day when cutting edge is now trend and the boundaries are being broken. We just saw that with Inspiration 4. My name is Scotty Melvin Clement. Actually, I'm just another crazy nerd. Just stress my last name, because in German, it means some process is always binding stuck or broken. So I'm often greeted with, hey, Scott, where's it broken today? Oh, Klimtis. Initially a software guy, now I'm a cool Cisco networking dude, or as we all strive to be. Being allowed to bring both together soft and hardware machine learning frameworks, that is amazing. Cool Cisco networker engineer, that's what I am. And actually, I'm over here in Germany, influencing my colleagues and superiors. And and right now, I currently have a cool job. I'm working for Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa Claus here in Germany. Can you imagine it? He yanked me out of the island of, of Misfit Toys, to polish up his Cisco appliances, and that's what I'm doing every day. I have to ask Cisco, are we doing, are we giving our customer an OSX experience, not just a CX experience, but an out of space experience? Nowadays, that's what the customer wants and deserves from us developers. So, I've said enough today about that. It's time to go. Let's go, Liza, let's go, Gopher. So, we're gonna say, why go long? I'm telling you, that's a great question and a lot of people are trying to answer it. I say, don't look at the Stack Overflow survey, even though you can. Look at the creators of Go Long. If you look at their credentials and their achievements, then you're going to know where this language is going. Those people were, uh, they are amazing people with amazing credentials. There's no need to not bet on this language because it's going to push Cisco to the OSX experience. And these engineers, as I said, are amazing. And this language is very fast, secure, and has future for Cisco as well as me. So the draw stuff, with any language, you have grammar. No one loves learning grammar. And unfortunately, you have to learn it. If you want to be a great programmer, you have to have an environment. In this case, I use Ryzen, the CPU, the switches and the routers you have in the data center, you're automating machine learning with AI in order to do proper auditing, SLAs, security. And you're rocking all these devices all day, every day. And we do this in order to add what? We are, <laughs> yeah, we do this to add uh, value to our certifications and to Cisco. Cisco has resources that allow us to push the limits, and that's what we want to do. Here you see I have created basically, you see to the left, uh, this is Leo Editor. It's amazing for doing what you need to do, structured thinking. It's an index in this case. And to the right, you see basically text pages that I have created for the community on my GitHub right now. And all you have to do is go to the uh, go to my GitHub site, Cisco IO. For example, the source link here, just take, take it and paste it. Yeah, just take it and paste it into the playground. Uh, go long, uh, Google has a, a go long playground and you can actually put code snippets in here and let them run. You don't need to install anything to learn this powerful language. Just put them in there. I provided links and you can actually run it online, producing results and edit them. Play around with it. Make your own creations. As I said, my text files here are provided at uh, GitHub. Just go take a look. And also provide links because I'm learning just like you guys. And I'm I'm searching the internet all the time. And I'm putting the links in here because I'm not here to steal anyone's information. No, I don't have to steal thoughts. I have too many as as there as there are. I'm having fun with this and I'm passionate about it. I'm sure you can see that you can feel.
feel that for me. As in the in in the in my background to the left, you have the index with the primitive data types. I have primitive data types. I've broken it down just like you would learn the language, just like everyone's out there doing it. Only I'm doing it here, Scotty's way. And I'm using the playground in a way that I haven't seen it. I'm I'm creating uh, content and you, I've already pre-created content that you can just grab, throw it into the playground and have fun with it and learn something. Because the more go long you learn, the better your career is going to be. I guarantee that. And if you can network as well, then you're going to be an SDN and you're going to have fun. Here, this pointers, pointers is a difficult subject, okay? But we have YouTube and we have Medium. We have references out there. Go take a look. And then you can just take my page, my text page, and just throw it into the Go Long or you can just copy the link. Normally I have a source code link. In this case, it's just more background uh, resources. Go take a look at those because uh, I'm learning just like you guys. I don't know everything. It's a, it's a lifelong process, but we have fun doing it. Or it's a process just like we're speaking English or if you're learning a language like German, you don't learn it overnight. You don't learn go long overnight either, but it's a step-by-step -step process. We have on the job training and that gets the job done. So mind maps, the idea, the initial idea of my REST engine was to support the DCNM and ESA as a reporting and auditing tool, okay? And here you see, uh, we're running, we have to save the running configs right now. The DCM is not doing a good job as far as I'm concerned. It can do better and it will do better because we developers make it happen. We have to listen to the customer though, and we have to listen to what the customer needs and we have to make it happen. As I said, the DCM and the easier, I'm trying to support the Cisco appliances uh, by using a uh, machine learning construct. Okay, and uh, as we say, the interaction with the ESA is something I'm trying to uh, arrest API calls, trying to accomplish here. And uh, obviously, it's a powerful situation here. It'd be great if you could just uh, get the live logs and trigger it through a trigger and actually do the version control and take the running configs and save them and, and, and so that we know who did what. And you can do that with machine learning. You can do that with machine learning allows us to work faster. We cannot do this manually. We need a machine learning algorithm to do these decision making. Ergo T, please. See, just like that. And what we do here is provide you today with brain food and ideas so that you can go out and do this stuff. Yeah. And my goal is is to basically use rest, representational state that is in itself powerful and uh, takes a long time to understand that representational state is complex, but machine learning allows us to get it done. I have a mind map here. I have my REST engine, the OS that it's based on is Debian 11. I initially used uh, CentOS, but uh, because of their future requirements, I decided to back off that and go with also, Proxmox is the virtual environment that I'm using, and it's running on Debian, so that's cool. And the even G is, for learning networking, a must, okay? Because you have Docker containers in there, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. The programming language, as I said, I don't have to beat up on other languages out there. Google, <laughs> Golang is going to torture them. That's just how it is. I've used IDE, just like everyone else. I've used visual code, but I've decided Adam does my job, my, meets my requirements more because I do a lot of uh, training, a lot, a lot of coding directly on the DCNM. These are basically the machine learning uh, that I'm using here. I'm using two different types of frameworks. I'm using one directly on the PhotoPrism TensorFlow, and I'm also using from Spargo, from Matteo Greta Grella. This is an amazing guy. He's got an amazing framework that he has created and it allows me to imagine. And I hope you guys see the same thing when you start using that framework. It's written in Go, it makes it long, uh, extremely fast, it's compact. This is really amazing stuff. This is the D 
DB and the web languages I use for the front end. So where are we at? Machine learning examples. This is my actual lab environment. Now we're going to graduate. I'm going to go into an, a, a real example using machine learning. Yes. And as you see, I've got my IDE Atom open. I've got my code. And I'm using, as I said, the machine learning framework from Matteo Grello. I've actually talked to him with email and made him aware that the fact I'm using his powerful language for networking. And uh, I must say that we have potential here with this machine learning framework. Uh, it's made for text recognition, and we use text, the release notes and stuff like that to determine if the iOS is the iOS that we're going to upgrade to, or should we wait maybe? And we've had problems in, in the past and bugs, this, a, every iOS has bugs in it, and in the release notes, they approach that and uh, warn us. And sometimes it's just so much to uh, uh, consume in so short of time that it's difficult. As you see, these are the framework here. It has different types of models. You build and learn, you, you teach the models to actually recognize the patterns so that you can make a risk analysis from the information you're feeding it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train up my framework. Here we go, we're training it up. Uh, with this model, I'm using this input text. I'm going to run the program. Right now, you see that the Golang programming language is designed by Google. That's my text. We're going to use a short, simple text to start out with. Okay, I'm going to run it. It's going to train up my model, and then I'm going to be able to ask it questions. Yeah. So we're going to watch that here. This is, as I said, the text we're going to be using, the simple text to start with, but then we're going to go with the bug description and the bug. Okay, we're going to run this simple paragraph concerning the Go Language program when it was created. Who created it? We're running the training. I'm going to let it run. Okay, we just ran it. Okay, it's loaded up the model, it's fed it with the text. What kind of questions can we ask? In this case, you can imagine what kind of questions we can ask. What type of language, when it was created, who created it. We can do all kinds of stuff like that. Let's run in here. What a first question is, what is Go? That was easy. Second question, who created it? Who invented? As notice, invented is not in the text, but yet the each response is also given a weight 0 0.60 that's 60 percent it's the machine learning algorithm saying i'm 60 percent sure that what i just told you the first time is right it's pretty tough but it can get better if we train and we work on the models i can actually go in eventually when i understand this more i'll be able to train my model better which will give me better results you say now we're going into the bug we're going to go into a bug text yeah, and Stack Overflow is one place I go to to get, it's a one-stop shop to get answers. And you have a lot of programmers out there, a lot of competent people providing answers. You should use that as well. I look at the examples and then I modify them to create my, uh, to meet my needs. Yeah, and, and it's all learning by doing. I must say, you should try to become a, member of Stack Overflow because the community lives from your feedback as well as mine. Here's my Go code. As you can see, that I'm at the bottom. This is the URL data bank for the release notes I'm using concerning the iOS that I'm planning on uh, upgrading to. I'm going to save it locally, and then I'm going to parse out the parameters in the HTML. You see this? It's, it, uh, it's a bunch of clutter for a lot of people, but you can actually parse out the parameters, I get the bug URL, the bug ID, the bug symptoms, parse those out into my program to use them as input to train up the model. And as I said, I'm using simplified text here because I just started learning Go. It's not, it's only been a few months actually. Now we're going into the bug text. I put the bug text, I've scraped the HTML, I've gotten the bug text here in, in, a, in a text file, and now I'm using it to feed my model. It's going to feed it up. It's loading up the text and saying, OK, I'm done. I'm ready for your questions. Give me a question. What's the bug ID? Yeah, you see that? I said bud ID. But yet, 
the pro the machine learning algorithm said I'm 100% sure I'm 1.00 I'm 100% sure that's what it is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Next question. What are the symptoms? <laughs> what are the symptoms of the bug? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Okay. It didn't get that. It did, but it says sorry, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I say symptoms are. Give me another. Uh, ah, look at that. It says it's sixty percent sure that the symptoms are the link may not come up. That's cool, but we can make these uh, training of the model way better with more data and more training. Eventually, it's going to give you a real workaround. Uh, it's going to give you a hundred percent say sure that you will need to do this. And like I said, here the have to change it now if you actually took the text and put it into say a google translator which is also an api you could do this all no hands you could ask okay okay google what happened okay cisco what happened Where, what workarounds do we need to use on this bug if it should occur yeah and then we could go in and actually as we're doing a patch, if we're upgrading an iOS or actually uh, or doing uh, uh, installing a patch on the ESA, uh, then Google or our machine learning algorithm will say, okay, patch four may cause you problems. Please do not install that patch. Wait, make a tech case before you install it because it might cause a disruption, which we did have, even though a Cisco tech, Cisco told us, Install the patch four. Yeah, we installed it as we should have. And what happened? Problems. Maybe a machine learning would help us more in these moments, which would also cause the customer experience to increase to into an OSX level. An OSX, OSX level. Now so that the customer is very happy with his product and he's very happy with Cisco. And we're all meeting the needs and the desires of our customers. So as I said here, now we're going to DCNM. Something I'm working on, and I'm I, right now I have the DCNM up, and also have the uh, SSH SSH into the DCNM. The left, you see all the commands that I have learned. There are still way more to learn, but this is the point where I'm at. Okay, you can use the app uh, app manager for status. And everything you spend a lot of time on the DCNM on the CLI. The GUI is for the okay. I am a Linux guy. The CLI is where I'm at. Okay, the GUI stuff is for yeah the people who, but the, for the really cracks, you have to be on the CLI. And in this case, I'm looking at the templates, and the templates are unfortunately in Python. I don't like this. Uh, this is one thing we could increase. It would increase the constant experience if it were just used more go long. So this is actually a photo prism I'm using as a, a front end, uh, as a front end a comparison to the DCNM, because it's written in go long. It's very fast, and it also has built-in machine learning it's open source. And I'm experimenting with this to see exactly what I can do, and I can also compare it to the machine learning algorithms for Spargo. Okay, TensorFlow is not uh, written in go long yet. Maybe in the future that will change. Who knows? But in my case, I'm using that to um, test this front end and the machine learning aspects. And uh, and also, the, I like the auditing uh, here as far as the auditing stuff, the visual auditing. Yeah, and actually, you can go into the program and manipulate. In this case, I'm doing the calculating longitude and latitude from my switches in the buildings. To basically know more control over my network, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, the Docker logs, thanks to Julio, he just told, he just helped me with these commands. And as I said, collaboration is key when it comes to making the DCNM an an OS OSX DCNM. Okay, shouts out. I'm back to shouts out here, Cisco. I'm so happy you guys give me. The opportunity to work on your appliances at the ease of DCNM and also the text that helps me, the Sherlock Holmes, the visual tech, and also my key people. And this is Denmark. Yeah, on the water. Thank you. 